And today, as you've seen in our videos, faith is just 100% passive. It's not following Jesus. It's not taking up your cross. It's not striving to enter. It's none of those things. It, it's just he, his perfect obedience and his righteousness are credited to you. Everything's provided to you by the sacrifice of Jesus, by the fact that God poured his wrath out on Christ and he suffered the penalty of your sins. There's been an exchange made. And now if you trust in that and rest in that provision, then God no longer sees you sinning, but only Jesus not sinning when you sin. And that's basically the gospel today that's pounded into everybody's head 24 hours across the airwaves, everywhere you look. But I'm telling you, that is not faith. That is not what the Bible teaches. And if you follow that, you're going to follow that down the road to perdition. The reason that people are in such reprobated states and use Christianity as a means to uh, achieve their various carnal agendas in this world, including civil activism and, and everything else, is because of this nonsense religion that they believe in. Because they don't... These preachers have been preaching this nonsense for so long for so long that nothing you do matters. Nothing can affect the outcome of your salvation. It's all a done deal, no matter how you live, no matter what happens. You're kept in Christ just for believing in this package, in this provision. Future sins already forgiven. They all say that. Everybody, there's no exceptions to that. Past, present, and future sins are forgiven in advance, nailed to the cross. Jesus then became sin for you, suffered your, suffered your penalty. The wrath of God was poured out on him instead of you. You changed places with him when you uh, said, I do. That's basically all they got to get you to do. It has nothing to do with sin, your conduct, your behavior, before or after you become a Christian. It doesn't make any difference. No matter how much they harp on, on doing the right thing, it all boils down to it's only out of gratitude for this wonderful gift that you're going to serve Jesus, but everybody's going to sin all the time because they're born sinners and they can't help it. And, that, and that's basically the gospel. Now, if you make any effort then whatsoever then to work out your salvation, to keep yourself pure, to cleanse yourself of all filthiness and overflow of wickedness like the scripture tells you to do, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, obey Christ, take up your cross, make your calling sure, endure to the end, run the race, and a hundred other things the scripture says, that's just a few I just went over, then you were probably never saved to begin with because you're relying then on your own works of righteousness to save you. That's what you'll be told in the churches. Well, you're trying to save yourself. On the other hand, if you rest in the provision with full confidence now that God doesn't see you sinning, and when you do sin, he sees Jesus not sinning, admit that you're a wretched chief of all sinners, and, and the Romans wretch, and, and the, you can't do anything right, then you're honoring God and you're eternally secure. Because you can't do anything to commend yourself to God. And if you try you'll cancel grace out. The minute that I try to commend myself to God by my good works, I cancel grace out, I become a self-righteous heretic thinking that I can save myself. That, that's how Piper, MacArthur, Ed Young, uh, you name it, you name the teacher. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of men and women in the pulpits today preach this. Churches all across this land People relying on this, this rudimentary faith that they have in God to save them and bring them into the kingdom when they know nothing at all about, about Christ, about the blood, about forgiveness of sin, a purging of the conscience. They know nothing. Let's see if this adds up according to the scripture. According to the scripture, what, what we have here is Abraham's faith is the example in Romans chapter 4. They'll try to go to Romans chapter 4, the first few verses, and say, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. So that proves it. That's the proof text. Faith equals righteousness, not works. Blessed is the man that doesn't work, it says in there, right? However, what else does it say about this faith? Well, let's look at it. It says in verse 12 that Abraham walked in the steps of faith. It goes on to say in John 8, 39, when he was taught, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees about Abraham, that he did the deeds of faith. If you were Abraham's sons, you would do the works of Abraham or the deeds of Abraham. And it goes on to say again in Romans 4, verses 21 and 22, that he was steadfast in his faith, fully convinced and persuaded in God. 
unwavering in his faith, steadfastly obedient. Finally, it's declared that that faith, his faith was obedient. In Hebrews 11, Abraham obeyed God. Faith equals obedience. It's not a secondary thing. Faith is obedience. For, bay from the heart. That's what the scripture says. Finally then, it, it says in verse 23, this is the reason it was declared to him, counted to him as righteousness. Nothing said about Jesus doing anything for him. Nothing said about a transfer, about a provision that was made for Abraham. He did the deeds of faith, walked in the steps of faith, and did the did the performance. If he walked, he did the deeds, he did the performance, he made an effort. And that's why it was credited to him as righteousness. From his heart. From his heart. It's a long time before the law was, was given, right? There's a huge difference between believing as the devils believe, like you're being passed off in your churches, and doing what is clearly Abraham put forth this effort in faith before he was declared righteous in the scriptures, just like Abel in, in Hebrews chapter 11. This passage shows us that Abraham goes on to say in Hebrews 6.15 that after Abraham endured, he received the promise. Endure, receive. He put forth an effort. Again, his faith had to prove steadfast by his deeds before anything came to pass. That's why James could say, you see that a man is justified not by his faith alone, but by what he does. He's been justified by what he does and not by faith alone. James 2.24. So where's the provision? Where's the provision? Where's this mysterious transfer of virtue taking place that Piper and, and MacArthur, all these guys, rely on? That, that they're going to heaven with. Not their righteousness. Oh no, God cloaked in Jesus. Where's this at? Where does it say that? By, only by conjecture. Abraham surely didn't rely on any provision that was made or his future sins being forgiven. It's all 100% pure conjecture. It can't be proven by anything in the Bible that anybody was ever saved in this manner. In fact, the exact opposite is shown in every page of Scripture. You have to strive, dig deep, hold fast, endure, continue, fight, run, contend. Never was they told to trust and rest in what's already been done for them in advance. Never. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and the people in, in, coming out of uh, Egypt. They still had to endure. They had to obey. Where did Jesus once say to anybody in any of the parables about trusting in his provision or swapping track records of obedience with, him, with them? He told them specifically, if you want to inherit an eternal life, you keep the commandments and you take up your cross and you follow me. That's what he said again and again and again. That's not what Ray Comfort says and all the rest of them. So why do you people listen to these reprobate preachers telling you otherwise? The only reason I can see is because you love your sin. You love your sin. What other explanation could there be? You love it so much that you're willing to cling to this lie because you could easily expose this. Any child could understand that deeds and faith are the same thing. But you'd rather be blind than free from the bondage of your own corruption. So you take refuge in this lie, hoping against hope. Hoping against hope that the fanatics like us out here that are harping on the internet in, in different places are wrong, and you're going to go to heaven in your sins no matter what happens. Well, that's not what Abraham did. That's not what any of these guys did. They held fast. They held fast. They performed obedience. They made an effort. That's the one thing the preachers today are not going to tell you, that you've got to make an effort in faith. He, they believed from their heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. You believed from your heart. Romans 6. He didn't believe from your heart for him, like Piper says. You believed from your heart. Oh, faith is a gift. You get it from God. Where does it say that in the Scriptures? Where does it say that he somehow magically trans transfers faith into your brain? No, man has a free and independent will. He's not born a sinner. He's not born depraved. He's born free and independent, able to choose, has the willingness and the ability to come to God if he so will. Repent and believe and follow Jesus. Do so and live. 